Oh, hello there. You've caught me in all of my like post work glory. I haven't even had a second to like go into my house or like reset and transition into my evening on this amazingly warm Friday. I'm sure it's like 100 degrees or something right now. Oh yes, we're in the thick of summer, but I'm very excited because obviously being Friday is very exciting, um, but I'm starting a new vlog and this vlog is very, very intentional. I really want to set aside this weekend to really connect with myself and to really focus on being playful and just getting back to like me because I started a new job and just, you know, transitioning into that is so cognitively overwhelming. This past month, as I've transitioned with my new job, I have had opportunities to care for myself, to engage in my hobbies, but it is a huge cognitive load to, you know, start anything new. So um, I, I'm really looking forward to this weekend because I haven't had for many weeks now a really like concentrated time to just focus on what I want and filling up my cup. So that is the intention for this vlog, really focusing on just, you know, playing and, and having fun and just doing things because they are very enjoyable to me. And it's even extra fun when I get to like create something beautiful from that. Like by creating this video, you know, I'm even pouring more time into myself, even just the idea of like creating a video about my free time, about my life away from work. Like I'm using my time on me, you know, like just to, to really push that point that I'm important and worthy of spending time on just for the fun of it, right? Just for the heck of it. I'm really looking forward to tonight. I had a wild week. It was a roller coaster with many highs and lows, but I'm ending on a positive one. So I'm kind of celebrating that too at the same time. So yeah, let's get inside. I'm roasting out here. I had a fantastic Friday evening. It was exactly what I needed. And right now I'm off to go see Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. It came out last night, I think, like yesterday. Um, and so I booked a very early morning ticket to go see it. And I love the fact that I purchased a ticket for 9.20 a.m. in the morning. And there were already other weirdos like myself who had already purchased tickets for that same showing. I absolutely love it. I have the world's worst anxiety when it comes to going to movie theaters and just overly fixating on people talking and laughing and have their phones out. So if there's something I really want to see in theaters, I will go. That's probably the only reason why I will go. I know if I really wanna have um, a good experience because I have a lot of hype, in anticipation for a movie like Beetlejuice, I will do uh, a morning showing and, you know, just decrease the likeliness that there's gonna be younger people at the theater. So I'm hoping I have just like older silent folks who are hanging out uh, at 9, 20 a.m. to see Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I have hyped myself up by watching the original movie last night. That actually was pretty good. Like I am not the hugest fan of Beetlejuice. There's some people who in comparison to me are like over the moon obsessed with it. They have all the merch, they have all the items and all the clothing and the shirts and whatever. I enjoy it because the aesthetic is so Tim Burton and I do love the characters and the storyline. Um, but then when I rewatched it last night, I was like, oh, okay. Like, I think I really like this. I think more than I thought. And it's been a few years since I've seen it. And just oh, this morning, like just the little luxuries of having hot coffee. Like I've been having to switch over to iced coffee in the mornings because it's just quicker to knock back and get that caffeine buzz for work. 
but gosh, this morning enjoying my little Stay Puffed coffee and having my pumpkin spice creamer. It's just the little things that are just so lovely and so restorative. But on a different note, can we normalize going to the theater and looking like shit? I've been seeing so many people getting dressed up to the nines and, you know, with all of their, their Beetlejuice garb on. And I, I think that's like really cool. That's like really fun to like get creative and have that experience. But then there's people like me that look at that. There's this collective feeling you get when, you, when you're seeing things repeatedly on your timeline or on your newsfeed. And as a consumer of media, you naturally just start to feel things, you know? It's like you could be the most enlightened person, but social media will always make you feel some type of way. And there was a moment where I was like, oh, like I don't have all those things. I didn't want to buy all these things to experience Beetlejuice in that way. There's just this like performance of what it means to be a Halloween lover sometimes that kind of gets to me a little bit. So I <laughs> had to remind myself what I've learned in all these like video essays, which is that you don't have to buy things to be the thing that you really care about, right? Like I love Halloween. I do not have to keep spending my money to show that to the world, to post that to the world. So just a little good reminder to yourself. If you just wanna like literally throw on whatever you have uh, and look like you just kind of got out of bed, which I did, and just go to the theaters and enjoy yourself, do it. Especially since I woke up today at like 4.45 a.m. to take Thomas to the airport, I, immediately went back to bed and had like a good solid two hours of sleep before I like actually got up to start my day. Okay, it is time to go watch Beetlejuice Beetlejuice with all my fellow early birds. So fingers crossed that this is a good time. Okay, let's talk about it. Let me share with you my immediately walking out of the movie theater review of Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. I am so sad that I did not like this movie more. I felt like there was so many creative opportunities that were missed when it came to the storyline or the characters or like their development in their narrative arc. Like for example, I found that whole subplot that was directly impacting Beetlejuice to be so unnecessary because the way it wraps up is just like super quick, making me think like, oh, what was the point of that? Like it felt pointless. Whereas we should have used that screen time instead to have been given over to creating a more compelling narrative arc for Lydia Dietz's daughter, Astrid, played by Jenna Ortega. Because her storyline, like in the beginning, it, it just felt like, oh, like really, this is, this is from the creative mind of Tim Burton. It just felt so lackluster and the ways that she has her evolution with her mother just felt so bland. And I think the saddest thing about this movie, which is I think my biggest gripe, is that it didn't feel like a Tim Burton movie, like anybody could have directed this. It really didn't feel like it had the same like technicolor oversaturation as the original movie. The original movie's surrealism and just feeling like, you know, we're on like the set, it all felt so cartoony. Maybe that's like a product of the 80s, but like I wanted that in this movie and it just felt like we were in a normal house when in the original movie, like, you know, everything was like so large and bigger. Like, I don't know, I'll put some pictures up here so you kind of can see. Now that I'm talking to you about this, I feel like it might have something to do with the fact that we aren't in such an isolated setting anymore in this movie. The original one, you know, we do go to the afterlife a little bit and we do have like little peaks here and there of the town where, you know, the Dietzes end up moving to. But for the most part, there's one set, there's one place we go, there's a pretty small cast of characters that we get to know throughout the course of the movie. And that is very different in this second one. We have tons of people coming in and out. We're going into different locations, right? I think we're like in New York at one point. And then, um, you know, we're, we're moving to the countryside and we're like in the whole, you know, neighborhood of this small little town. I think it's called like Winter Creek or something. So I think that does something. I think that changes the magic. Yeah, I'm sad. Um, that was a total dud for me. Kind of disappointed, but I'm really happy for you if you really enjoyed it. Like, I'm so happy if that's the case for you. Um, I just, yeah, I'm sad. I'm sad. And it could totally be the case because this happens all the time where I don't necessarily care for something immediately as I walk out of the theater or like when I put the book down, if it's like a book I'm reading. But then later on, I process it. You know, it's like months later and I start to think about it more and more. And I'm like, oh, like, I actually like that more than I thought I did. And that's always the challenging part of sharing my thoughts online publicly is that I, I change and evolve my opinions, but I don't necessarily update people here. So that's um, like kind of, um, not a big deal, but um, something that 
I think about. Anywho, I did have some fun with it, so it wasn't like this total waste of time for me. Right after the movie, I headed to Target because it's inside the same mall that the theater is located in, and I picked up tons of fall treats and foods that, ugh, I, like my heart was exploding as I was walking through these aisles, and they haven't even put everything out just yet. They don't even have any Halloween decor out besides the Bullseye Playground. They still have those silly little back to school aisles filled with something. So I gotta wait a little bit and I'll share with you all my yummy fall foods and treats later on in another video where I do like my whole like seasonal reset. But I will share some things I got from the Bullseye Playground. I picked up this cutie right here. I think you'd call it lavender, lilac? I don't know, but it's sparkly as all hell and it's pretty light. It's, yeah, it's not like really coming off which is nice. I feel like a lot of these sparkly glittery items at TJ Maxx or Marshalls, they just like shed like nothing. And this is not doing that for me. It was about $5, honestly kind of pricey for it. It's unlikely that I'm gonna be bringing out this little guy for Halloween, um, but Halloween is the time where I shop for all my other seasons, especially now that these stores are putting out so many pastel and just like whimsical, items that they're just perfect for spring, spring ween when I decorate for that. And then I got this ceramic little pumpkin. It's kind of more like a gourd, I guess. It's like a little iridescent orange color and then it has like um, this gold little stem. And I thought these paired really well together and they'd be really great on my desk. And then lastly, I picked up some party supplies because I am known to throw a very wonderful Halloween party, but they might also work for my bachelorette party if I decide to go with like a spooky Halloween-esque kind of theme. We'll see, I'm still kind of like um, helping my peeps plan that out. Um, but this is so cute and could be used in a variety of different occasions. If I ever decide to do like a spring Halloween party later down the road, this is perfect. It could obviously work for Halloween. Um, and I just love that it already comes with the bats to put on the garland. And then speaking of bats, I really love this super simple bat tablecloth for like a large rectangular table. It is just simple and I love it so much. Okay, I spoke too soon. There's literally like purple glitter all over my hands. Okay, it's about 1.30. I have the entire rest of my weekend to myself because my partner, he's out of town visiting family. So I have literally like full control over home. And as they say, when the cat's away, the mice will play. The Sims. Good afternoon, happy Sunday. I feel like Sundays get such a bad rap, and I mean rightfully so. The next day you might have a job that you just, you know how much effort it takes to do it well, and you know, maybe the job is never done. That's how I feel. So I feel like even if you love your job as much as you possibly can, or you could, it's still like almost inescapable to not have the Sunday scaries the day before you're going back to work. I think a really good game plan for me is to try to make today as calm and relaxing as possible. That is the intention. I don't think so far I'm doing a really good job at that. I had a lot planned today and it is super tough when you wanna do a lot of things and you don't have a lot of free time. So typically the weekends is where you kind of shove as much as possible in. But with that being said, I did have a great morning. I was on Brooklyn's Cozy Coven Sprints where we just kind of hang out and you know we chat and we participate in our hobbies and we just kind of check in with each other and it's really fun to be able to have a space where it's just, you know, all things go. Last night I watched Tara, which is streaming on Netflix. This one I did want to see in theaters, but immediately it got like such negative reviews. So I was like, this is not worth the price of a movie ticket these days. And then I heard it was gonna be streaming on Netflix and I have a subscription for that. So I'm all about, you know, making use of what I'm already paying for. And the reviews are not wrong. It is not a good movie, but I, you know, found it semi enjoyable. I was getting a little bit bored because of its predictability and the delivery of lines wasn't always the best, 
but I did love the atmosphere and there were some really great jump scares. And the big, big draw for this movie is gonna be the creatures, the monsters themselves. This movie is about a group of college students who unknowingly start giving each other like their own tarot card readings with this like really cursed deck of cards. And then, you know, one by one, they kind of get picked off a la Final Destination. The fun of this movie is seeing the tarot cards come to life through the art of Trevor Henderson, who just recently and very coincidentally got put on my radar. I feel kind of silly being out of the loop about this person. He's a writer, he's an artist, like he's a Renaissance person. And I first heard of his existence with the book Scare Waves, which was a book I recently read and finished and really enjoyed. It's a very creepy middle grade book. Like the creepiness factor is like, ooh, way up here when it comes to middle grade books. And I mean, just the cover alone, is very unnerving and I'm assuming it's from him, his work. I would 100% recommend Scare Waves. It's this very cozy atmospheric book and there's a podcast element to it that legit feels so real and the sound effects in it are awesome. And, and the story itself was pretty good. I mean, there's a part of it I feel like with the ending that maybe wrapped up a little bit too quickly that didn't give us enough information, enough of a payoff. But other than that, I will be seated for the sequel, which I did see on Goodreads is coming out next year. But overall, I wouldn't like go out of your way to see this movie. I think it's fun with friends to watch or if you're really into Trevor Henderson's art. But other than that, I feel like you could skip it. As you can tell, I really did not have any energy or desire to get like fully ready today after I took a shower this morning. So I'm just, yeah, I'm living my best lazy life there's things you do during the weekday that you do out of like obligation or necessity that like you cannot be bothered to do on your own time during the weekends no 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 like I don't want to put on any makeup right now do my hair nothing but I do need to run out and go into the world to grab some sushi I'm gonna have my sister and my bestie come over and we're gonna chat about some like bridesmaid stuff so I'm gonna be hosting them here. So I think that's gonna take up the bulk of my afternoon. And then I do have a few things I wanted to do to kind of get myself ready for the week, like meal planning, going out, filling out my gas tank, getting some groceries. And I did wanna kind of end the night doing some really relaxing self-care, maybe having um, a foot bath. I'll keep you posted, but I think the biggest intention for this Sunday is like just to have a calm nervous system where I don't feel pressured or stressed but I do want to use my time wisely. It's like the eternal struggle. <laughs> we'll see what I get to, but I think ultimately um, I just need to be present, relaxed, and not worried about, you know, going back into work mode. That'll, that'll be here. It'll come when it comes. No need to already get myself there mentally. Before I head to bed, I wanted to just like check in for the last time, close out the vlog. I had an awesome time with my sister and my bestie. That took the bulk of my afternoon. So around like five or six, I started to do my meal planning for the week. I got my agenda set up. After that, I was like, okay, what like hobby or fun thing can I do for myself? Because I did have a few hours and I panicked. Like, have you ever just like froze? and you just had something like, like um, I guess like a decision fatigue moment. It's happened to me before and it's, it's not boredom, it's like boredom plus something else. Like maybe it has something to do with me being overstimulated constantly and not having any time for my brain to just have a break and to just kind of sit and be um, present without it trying to problem solve or respond to things or have other people like talking to me. I don't know what is going on. I just haven't felt that moment in a long time. So I started to panic a little bit because I'm just like kind of going around in circles in my mind. Like, what do I want to do? I have a few hours to kill. I have a few hours uh, that are precious, right? I don't get this kind of time in the week where I'm already like pretty relaxed and ready to do something. So I try to be grateful and use that gratitude as a way to kind of push me through that feeling because I've never been bored for the past like two weeks. There's always been something on my plate, something to think about, something to worry about, something to respond to and fix. So I, I started to be grateful. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like a little bit bored. This is great. This is awesome. What a privilege. And then I was like, okay, let's just do one thing. Let's like do one action. Let's get physically into an activity, even though my mind, my emotions aren't there yet. So I did this whole like foot soak thing that I like to do, which is very calming to warm your body up. I'm not a bath person at all. I don't have one in my home to use that feels comfortable for me. And even if I did, I don't think it's really my thing. I get bored really quickly and there's just like this 
I don't know, unpleasant sensation I get when I'm in a place that doesn't feel clean to me. I can do a jacuzzi for some reason, so I don't know what the difference is. And so I did that and it really did help. Like I, I started to get interested in a book. So I, I got to Autumn Crow and I started that. I'm only like 12% into it, but um, you know, I'm, I'm liking it so far. So it's a short story collection about this town called Autumn Crow. And it is basically like the spookiest town in the country. And I don't think I mentioned it at all in this vlog, which I, I think I need to, that I've been listening to an audiobook all week weekend long, even the work week before that, which is a part of the Bay Moon Witches series. It is a cozy supernatural mystery and oh my gosh, I am obsessed. Like who am I? Like I'm a cozy mystery person. Like I love cozies. Like what is this? And the best part about this book is like people hate it. Like it has pretty negative reviews on Goodreads at the top of the page for it, but I, I love it so much. Like I don't know what people aren't getting about this story. I think it's the perfect blend of romance and mystery and like spooky supernatural stuff. It definitely was giving Halloween Town vibes, which is what I kind of thought on the outset when just reading the summary. I think there's about like four books in this series and then there's like a prequel. All of them are available on Everand. And so I, I've been listening to the audiobooks. I'm currently on the third one, which is called Fruitcake and Familiars. I'm, I'm so obsessed. All of the books are really great and immersive and they're not too fantasy for me. It's the perfect blend. So we're following Hazel, who is this like green witch, and she lives in this town called Bay Moon, and she has friends who are shifters and vampires, and this whole community that is very supernatural with all of these like normies who are in the town as well. So it kind of gives a little bit of like the good witch, but with some true blood vibes. But again, it's a cozy mystery. So not a lot of violence, nothing too spicy in this one. And I say it's like true blood because in true blood, the book and the TV show, everything is set in the normal world. You're just adding all of these supernatural elements, whether it's a werewolf, vampire, witches, like they're part of our world. And so it's very easy to understand how they operate. There's no extravagant um, magical systems that you have to learn about. I don't care for those really intricate things. I just kind of want the cozy atmosphere. And she, you know, she talks about like food and cooking and there's really heartwarming moments with friendship and it's not too heavy in the romance. So it, it's surprising, um, but it, it's always wonderful when I find that I am gravitating towards trying new genres and then they really hit for me. Recently, that was like literary fiction. So I, I love when there's growth in this area of my life and I'm just brave trying new things. All right, tomorrow is Monday. Another work week begins. It felt refreshing to focus on my needs and to connect with myself and have me be the person that I'm caring for. And I think it amplified itself because my partner was out of town this weekend. So I think I'm just gonna carry that energy into this new week and use that to kind of hold myself together in a way because it's just so easy to feel like all the balls that you're chuckling um, can just, you know, fall out of your hands, fall out of your control in the blink of an eye because you're not like keeping up with all your obligations, your to-do lists. Man, this adulting thing is tough but um, I, I'm really grateful that I get to, to do this alongside you and to have a community where you know you get these things and you understand that self-care is so important and it's more than just like buying things, it's being there for yourself and honoring your needs as a human. It's shockingly simple how easy it is to meet your needs and to be there for yourself in like just super, super simple ways. It's time to hop in bed, but I would love to know down below in the comments, what are some things that you like to do for yourself during the weekends to build that connection back with yourself, to reconnect to your needs and to what you need emotionally. Um, what does that look like for you? I'm very excited to chat with you all about self-care in a very wild, wild world. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you again for being here. I appreciate your time. I'm wishing you a great week ahead. I will see you all in my next video. Bye.